In the last eight years, I've been an active angel investor myself. Prior to that, I was a serial entrepreneur who started seven companies, exited five of them very successfully, two by IPO, and the rest were private transactions. So please join me for this video series, and I hope it helps you raise some capital for your early stage company. Let's talk about your team. You know, you'll hear investors say, especially for early stage companies, one of the biggest things we're investing in is the team. We fully expect, because we've been there before, that the company may need to pivot, change, modify things over time. But the team is the consistent core that's gonna make this company successful. So at this point in the deck, I don't recommend putting the team first. Uh, you'll hear some other people recommend that. Personally, I believe the team should be deeper in the deck. I think an investor wants to buy into the, the market need, your solution, your traction, the market size. And now the team should be, this sounds like a great opportunity, and we are now the team that's going to make this happen for you, the investors, and for our employees and our customers. So we're interested in hearing about your relevant experiences. We want to know, have you been there and done that before? Have you worked in the industry a long time? Have you had multiple successful exits, a successful exit? Is this your first startup or have you done this before? So all those things give comfort to the investor that the team that you've assembled will be successful. Now let's fully acknowledge here, you're probably an early stage company and you don't have unlimited budgets. There are always holes to fill within your team. And that's where your advisors can come into play and really be impactful to your overall deck and the overall success for your company. So we're interested as investors in terms of who have you assembled? Who has agreed to be your advisors and your counsel for the company as you grow into more and more employees? Do they come with a great deal of industry experience? Can they provide market access for new customers? Can they assist with things like your barriers to entry, your legal your documentation? So how have you used your board, your advisors, the people who are not direct employees, how are you using those groups or those individuals to fill the holes that your team currently has? And maybe part of the reason you're raising money is to fill the holes. So be sure to outline that to entrepreneurs to say, at this stage in our growth, we are now looking for a new VP of sales or a new individual to look after marketing directly, or we need to move into a full-time CFO to manage our, our business side and our finances. So whatever that might be, maybe that's part of the reason for the raise, outline that for investors. Perhaps one of the investors would like to fill that role themselves or have a good referral to someone who can help as well. So really, we want to understand who's the team today, what are the holes that you've had, how have you tried to plug those holes uh, directly through advisors and your board members, and then what do you need in the future to grow that team? This is the point in the deck where we really want to say, I like everything that I've heard, and I believe that this team is the team that's going to make this company successful. So make sure you spend time here, sell us on you, your team members, your board members, and all the great experience that you're going to be able to bring to the table to make your company successful. Okay, let's talk about your team and its coachability. I'm only going to draw this one point because I think it's super important from an investor's perspective. We are looking for a team that is coachable. And this is how you can actually take advantage of all the experience that your investors will bring to the table as well. They may have connections into new industry partners, into new customers, into new technologies, into other company relationships. What we're looking for as an investor is to see that the team is coachable. Now, what does that mean in the context of a company? It doesn't mean that every suggestion we make, you blindly say yes to. In fact, that's not what we're looking for at all. We're looking to make a suggestion for you to think about it, uh, contemplate it, and then come back with whether you think it makes sense or doesn't make sense. Perhaps you've considered it before. Perhaps it would be a distraction today and it's on your long-term roadmap but won't come into play for another year. So we want to hear that you listen to the investors, that you understand what they're asking about, and then you respond in a very thoughtful way. Straight dismissal of ideas, so that type of, can come across very arrogant. And I can tell you, having sat through thousands of, in, of investment opportunities in the past, non-coachable for most investors means no investment. 
So we are looking for that level and to your advantage as well. Take the experience, the connections, and not only the capital that the investors are offering and really leverage those to grow your company. Stay coachable. Thanks for listening to Lessons from a Thousand Pitches. I hope you found the content useful. I'd like to make an offer to everyone. Once you've gone through the series and you believe you have a deck that is ready to present to early stage investors, I encourage you to send us a copy of that deck for us to review. If we believe there is maybe a connection between what you're doing and what our investors are looking for at Credit Forum Canada, we'll send you an invitation to present that company to our deal screening committee via Zoom. We do these sessions every month and we have a continuous intake. So if and when you're ready, please do reach out to Credit Forum Canada. We're always looking for great investment opportunities and maybe you're the next entrepreneur that will turn into a unicorn. Thanks for listening and good luck with your company.